Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of this video series. Uh, we're just exploring the different NAT options that we can do on the 40 gates. So, um, in the last video we saw that with a simple toggle we could just do the overloading and that will take the WAN interface that's going out the firewall policy and add it. So, easy as just toggling a switch. Now, what about those situations where we might have a block of public IP addresses and we're just not using them? Or maybe we have a situation that demands that many outgoing connections. Now, normally a single NATed device, right, a single NATed IP address, in other words, one public IP address can have thousands of connections internally. But, you know, uh, the option's still there on the FortiGate. So in this video, we're going to check out IP pools, so which are going to be a collection of IP addresses that we can go ahead and distribute out in our netting options. So I also apologize ahead of time. My mic um, was really bad in the last video. So hopefully this one's not too bad. Um, I don't do this for any profit whatsoever, guys. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm not re-recording it. Anyways, um, I say that, but a few of you guys have subscribed, which, you know, I <laughs> at least need to make some kind of quality. But anyways, I'll shut up. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm definitely not a YouTuber, so I apologize. But let's go ahead and log in. All right. So remember, the goal of this video is to make an IP pool. So so right now it's just going to the external, to the external WAN interface. Oh, my session table's still going. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, but let's go ahead and go to policy and objects. And let's go to our IP pools right here. So in reality, we might have several public IP addresses, right? And why not take advantage of them? So the only caveat, I guess, is you still need to have the things routed to your WAN interface. In other words, your internet service provider is going to offer you like a slash 29 or maybe a slash 28. They obviously need to get back to your FortiGate. So I'm just going to make sure that assumption is there. So, um, but in this case, we're going to take a handful of IP addresses that go beyond our, our normal outgoing WAN interface. And I am going to call it my uh, IP pool, right? And here's a couple of options. Now, a one-to-one -one or fixed port range and port block allocation, I'm not going to cover in this exam. Simply, or in this exam, <laughs> guys, I got no sleep last night. In this uh, uh, video series, because these essentially turn off PAT. I don't need that here. So our WAN interface is going to be 10.200.1.1 on port 1 and we're pretending like that's a public IP address. But let's say we also had two, three, and four, right? Um, so what I can do here is I can say 10.200.1.1, but I'm also going to include 10.200.1.4, all right? So this way I have more IP addresses to, to use, all right? And I'm going to hit OK. Now, the whole ARP part of this, all right, guys, um, that's going to be up to your internet service provider if they need the ARP replies turned on. Normally, they'll have your one IP address that they gave to you for the point-to-point -point connection. Um, I, I've seen other videos that essentially say, oh, you got to turn that off. You know what? Whatever. That's going to be up to your internet service provider, but that's going to say that they're going to respond to ARP requests for these IP addresses. I don't mind in this example. So, all right, now that we have the IP pool, we now have to go ahead and sign it to our firewall policy itself. So we're going to go back, all right, and we are going to edit our internet access. And instead of doing overloading, we're going to use an IP pool. What IP pool are we going to do? We are going to use our IP pool. Now, don't forget with the newer versions of the 40 OS, if you hover over an object, um, you can actually look at the details. It kind of pops up like a little uh, uh, screen tip, so which is very helpful. 
if you can't remember what IP address ranges that you selected. So, but we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we are going to, there should be some kind of apply here. I think I'm a little too low. Oh, there it is. Okay. And now it's going to use those IP addresses in range. Now, unfortunately, I have only one source IP address, so it's probably going to keep on using that 10.0.1.1. But I'm going to go ahead and maybe generate some more traffic here. Um, there is a website that you can go to, even though I don't know if it's going to work in uh, Internet Explorer, but it's called Make Internet Noise. Dot com and this website will actually randomly go to web pages for you um, <laughs> got to be careful though sometimes it, it puts together words that are, might not be safe for work but that's okay so but let's go check out our our session table so here we go all right and that's kind of what I assume. So most of the time, guys, there's a good chance that it's going to be using our our uh, same source IP address because simply we we um, want to keep our routing symmetrical. If we had another one come along, though, I'm pretty sure that it'll use it. But you know what? I want to make sure we demo this correctly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to alter that IP pool and do it something so out of the out of the range that we can't you know have any kind of like you know questioning about it so let's go back all right let's go ahead and alter that IP pool and so what's the difference between my videos and like watching this on Fortinet's cookbooks guys I screw up it's all good <laughs> it's all good I, I want to make sure you guys uh, see me failing also so uh, let's say that our block starts with 10 and ends with maybe I don't know um, 25 it's a lot of IP addresses but that's okay now normally it won't actually generate any kind of new sessions if it's already established to Google uh, that's just kinda how the FortiGate works so what I'm gonna actually do here is I'm going to go to my FortiView alright I'm gonna go to my session tables and there is kind of a neat option here alright that you can come to the, the little gear shift here and you can auto update the table so in other words it's gonna go ahead and refresh this ever so often now if you go ahead and you oops there we go uh, you can actually end all sessions here so I'm gonna flush the session table which is going to force it to go ahead and redo the natting options and it looks like it's still going out the the WAN interface what that shouldn't be happening let's go ahead and take a look so let's go to policy objects let's go to IP4 and let's go ahead and make sure that it's applying the right policy here or not policy the IP pool alright so there it is all right, 10 through 25. All right. And like I said, there's a good chance that these are already established, and that's the reason why it's it's not really doing what I think it wants to do. So All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Port of view. And let's go ahead and look at all sessions. No, it's still it's still not doing the NAT IP address. What's going on there? Uh, NAT source. That should be right. It should be using the IP pool. Huh. Interesting. Oh, there we go. So it must have been because those sessions were already established. All right. 
but as you can see here, it's actually using 1.15. So I'm not too sure how the FortiGate actually picks the algorithm of, of which ones to use. I, I'm going to imagine it's going to be as symmetrical as possible here. Um, but it looks like the already established ones kept the 1.1 until we changed the actual pool itself. But um, normally we're not just sitting here like watching it. Uh, but as you can see, it did pick an IP address from that from that range. So uh, it just took a second to make it all all happen. So, but these right here must be ones that were already established. It looks like a lot of it's also with the FortiGuard services, which by the way, those are actually talking directly to the FortiGate itself. So that kind of makes sense. Um, but the ones that are actually being generated by that make internet noise is using the IP pool. So, so bottom line, guys, I know that was kind of hosh posh, right? Um, it was, it was a big hosh posh. Sorry about that. Uh, it just didn't happen as fast as I wanted it to. But uh, essentially, uh, you can assign an IP pool. And IP pool is just saying, hey, uh, use these, these list of IP addresses and, and make it happen now. If you do have a WAN interface IP address, right, and you want to use a different IP address for your NATing, but it's still something that you own that you maybe got from your service provider, you can actually do an IP pool for just one IP address. So in other words, maybe you have a point-to-point -point connection to your service provider using like the dot one in this example, but you own dot two and maybe dot three also you can actually make a, a one to one um, so it doesn't use that interface it's really all up to you and your needs and your organization but uh, hopefully that was helpful maybe I'll re-record this someday maybe I won't anyways but uh, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna do later on so we did the overload we did the IP pools when we get back when I get back to recording the video we're actually gonna do VIPs and VIPs is the other direction so uh, instead of us initiating the traffic from the inside out, we are going to do a DNAT, so from the outside in. So I'm going to create a DMZ and maybe a web server that hangs out over here, and we're going to see how we can point traffic actually inside our FortiGate. So hope you guys found that helpful. It probably wasn't, um, but I'll see you in the next video. So all right, take care.